Hello everybody, welcome to the start of a new vlog. We ordered a bunch of stuff to share. We have this roasted rosemary chicken with shoestring fries. These fries are so delicious. There's a little side salad that has a delicious lemon vinaigrette, very like springy. Some fried mushrooms, a watermelon salad with feta, cucumber, and onions that we've devoured. Handsome husband. We just finished up at dinner. We're walking back to the car. Would you ever believe that this block exists in Brooklyn? It doesn't even look like Brooklyn. Fun fact, if you have watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the one that has Donald Glover in it, the show on Amazon Prime. Which is so good. And so underrated. good. Yes. Like so if you good. first of all, if you've not watched it, stop watching this. Just stop watching this right now and go watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the show on Amazon Prime. One of the best things we have watched in a long time. Yeah. It is so good. Suspenseful, clever, you know, smart writing. Yes. It's like a relationship drama. Yeah. yeah, anything Donald Glover touches though, just Gold. genius, yeah. yes. Um, but anyway, they shoot a scene on this block and when we turned it, we we're like, oh my gosh, this is it. It's like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It like just doesn't even look like it's in Brooklyn at all. So anyway, we're finished with dinner. Now we're heading to, do you know the name of this bar? Hassenstubel. Hassenstubel, a German bar, if you couldn't figure it out by the name. Uh, that does trivia and we like to play trivia with a couple of our friends so we're going there tonight. There's not been one time that we have played and haven't placed. Andrew is, uh, yeah, our, definitely our team MV MVP. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, no, no. If, if yes, we were at the place that we play with your sister, sure. But up here, your music knowledge just lines up with... Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I am the team's knowledge when it comes to books and music, especially pop music. Books especially though, but that's what happens when you work in a bookstore for eight years. Anyway, yeah, so we're headed there now to go play some trivia with our friends, and it should be a fun night. By the way, all this construction stuff is reminding me, thank you so much for all of your kind and excited comments about the piece of land that we really love. Um, we don't know if we found a way to make it work yet. You guys all had some very lovely suggestions, all of which we have also thought through. Like, could we put a lake on the property? Um, I think somebody did suggest that. We've thought about that. We do wonder about, uh, a lot of people said getting rid of the basement and putting the basement like above it, which would be such a killer for our house design though. Uh, yeah, that would be tough. Yeah, that would, I mean like, that's probably what might have to happen, but we'd really hate to give up that basement. There's like a, it's a very integral to the design of the house. So we'll see, but yeah, we're still thinking about it. Gonna get in touch with the engineer. Yeah, we'll see. But thank you so much for your enthusiasm. Oh, Frank, who is this cute kitty? Who is this cute kitty? Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It's Memorial Day weekend, and my work gave us a half day today, so I'm nearly finished with work. I've already been a very busy bee this morning. Before work, I was out in the garden doing some work out there. I'll take you out and show you the updates of things I've been doing out there. Um, then obviously I've been working for a little bit, just finishing that up. And so I'm trying to decide what I want to do for the rest of the day. I know I want to continue doing some more gardening. There's just a lot. Now that the weather is finally, finally getting warmer here. I would love to work on my quilt a little bit more today. I'm working on the tiny tiles quilt. It's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. Um, but I'm expanding it to make it into a queen size quilt to use on our bed. It's actually going faster than um, I imagined it would. I don't know, I've also like chunked it up into small tasks rather than trying to marathon cut everything out at once. I just can't do that. So I've been just like breaking it up into small chunks. So I'm almost done. I have one more color left to do the two inch squares. And then after that, I just need to cut the all of the five inch squares of the cream background. So still quite a bit to do before I can get started with the sewing, but at least I'm making progress. So I definitely want to work on that today. I hope you're having a lovely weekend wherever you are. Let's do some 
quilt cutting. Just getting myself set up over here and I don't know what it is, but lately I have just really not been in the mood for garment sewing. Normally spring and summer are my absolute favorite seasons to sew for, but I just, I've not been in the mood lately, so I'm just not questioning it. I'm doing what I feel like doing. This quilt is honestly something that really feels like I, what I want to work on right now. So I can't wait to get to the sewing. But yeah, I just haven't felt like garment sewing lately. I've been in the mood for gardening. I've been doing a lot of reading lately. Um, and yeah, cutting out this quilt. So let's do that. The productivity of the morning continues. I have finished cutting out all of the two inch squares, which is very exciting. And now all I have to do is cut out the large cream squares, but I'm taking a little break for some lunch. I've ordered from a local spot that I really love called Henry's Vietnamese. I got a bubble tea and a vermicelli salad. So it's be nice and refreshing. Perfect for this warm late spring day. All right, I have finished my lunch. I'm getting ready to go outside into the garden to do some gardening work. I've got my gardening visor, which is perfect so I can keep my hair up and also keep the sun off my face while I'm out there. I'll leave it linked down below. But I also wanted to update you on two sunscreens that I've talked to you about. This one I haven't shown you before, but this is the one I got in my latest little Sephora haul. It's not focusing because it's too dark, but it's the Shiseido Clear Sunscreen Stick. And what I really like about this one um, is that I can use it really easily as like a top up after I've already put on a more like, I don't want to say more serious because they're both 50 SPF, but this one's a liquid one. So I put this one on as like the last step in my skincare routine. This one's the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. And this one I feel is like more serious I guess because it's a cream although it's really lightweight Let's see if I can show you that yeah so you can see it's really lightweight um, and because it has the hyaluronic acid in it it's just goes on really smoothly and lightweight and also gives some hydration so this is the one I use like every morning but then if I want to be able to top up my sunscreen while I'm out and I don't want to take like a liquid one with me that's where i bring the shiseido one with me because it's in this like stick like application and i can literally just like swipe it on and top up places that i feel like i need it shoulders and stuff so this is just better for on the go so i just wanted to report back because i really do love both of them and i use both of them very regularly and wanted to recommend them because sometimes i think it can be hard to find sunscreen that is lightweight enough that you feel like it's not heavy on your face when you're wearing it every day and it's so important to protect your skin. So this one I really love and this one I really love. I'll leave them both linked down below. Hello. All right, as you can see, we are out in the garden. This is the Black House Garden, AKA the one that's at my residence named after this greenhouse that is here that is black. It's very sunny out here and kind of like hard to see from the glare, but I'll just give you a quick peek at what I'm going to be doing out here right now and then I'll show you a little bit later like the progress that I've made once the sun's gone down a little bit or more in golden hour so you can see what I've done. I've been out here for about an hour already so some of the progress I have already made but I'm kind of in operation garden cleanup at the moment like a lot of my spring bulbs are done as you can see so I'm cutting some of them back lifting some of them I'm going to leave some to get some last dregs of sunlight in hopes that they'll bloom next year um, and then other than that you can see the roses there's one right there and one big one right here are going crazy right now so i really want to get some supports uh strung up so these are both climbing roses right here this one's one called teasing georgia and that one over there is called bathsheba both are david austin english roses and so in order to support this one what i do is I use these little eye hooks 
that I twist into the fence here and then string wire between the eye hooks and then use these Velcro strips. They're amazing. I get this at really any home improvement store here, but they're reusable every season. So the great thing is like you can leave them on or you can take them off and reposition them. Um, they're exposed to the elements 24 seven, as you can see. <laughs> and they're really strong and reusable, so that's nice. So then I use that Velcro, which is green, so it kind of hides itself to attach them to the wire support. <laughs> Teasing Georgia is a little bit funny. That's, again, this rose right here. I'm not sure if it does this because it's not in full sun all the time. That's the thing about this garden. Even though this one is south facing, it gets less sunlight than the other garden that I garden at, which is at my sister-in-law's residence. So this one's kind of always an experiment to see what will work here. It gets a lot of shade because of the fence, because of the garage here, because of the trees that surround it. So it doesn't get full sun all day, but it still does get quite a bit of sun on that side. Over here, on the other hand, completely shaded so i'm always experimenting fox gloves as you can see have been a huge success this year so now i will know that going forward these are completely upright with no staking whatsoever it's amazing um but with this rose over here that's kind of like dro not to say drooping but it kind of is like the canes that come from the leader cane are all kind of falling i don't know if it's doing that because i'm late getting it some support or if that's just the growth habit of it or if it's because it doesn't get like I don't know eight hours of sun it probably gets somewhere in the realm of like four to six maybe six ish okay that's what I'm doing I'm stringing up the wire supports and then I'll use these little velcro pieces and I just take scissors and cut like these are ones that I've saved that I didn't need for a different rose I took off as I was like repositioning it so I'll just use these little bits to attach it to the wire and then fan it as much as possible across the fence. And a little tip to get more blooms out of your climbing roses, but really any roses in general, is to like pull the canes down if you can, if they're flexible enough, like fan them horizontally or peg them into the ground because that will force the rose to want to send up shoots to go to the sun and you'll get a lot more blooms that way. And I've definitely seen that uh, with teasing Georgia this year. So that's very exciting because I pulled some canes out very laterally and I have so many shoots that all have flowers on them. Whereas if I had just let it kind of grow up, you'd only get flowers up at the top and then maybe a few along the side, but pulling it laterally makes the rose want to grow vertically and then you get more blooms. So there's a little trick for you. Okay, it's just after five o'clock. Um, I've been out here for a few hours now. I've gotten a lot done. It's looking so good. I'm just having the best time working in the garden and then taking a little bit to pause and enjoy it and walk up and down it. But yeah, so um, I'm gonna quit for the day though. So I wanted to go ahead and show you like what the garden is looking like right now at the Black House Garden because it's really about to pop off soon and it's already looking so, so good. So let's take a look. So here's the backed out view. This is what it looks like when you walk up. I have a lot of potted roses in the front here. I have a climbing rose here, one along the back. This is the new rose that I just planted this year. It's called Munstead Wood. This is the rose I bought as a tribute rose for Mika. And then behind it, I have one called the Lady Gardener. The, but the blooms aren't looking so great right now because they've been in the heat all day, but that one will probably look great in the morning. And then the climbing rose right here is really kind of outgrowing this obelisk that I have on it. I have to like duck underneath it to get in. So I think what I'm gonna eventually do uh, is get some sort of arch to put it on because clearly it's like wanting to get bigger than it can grow on this obelisk. So I think an arch would be a good solution for right there but it's got so many buds on it this one again is one called Bathsheba so she's just getting ready to go down here I have a rose called uh, Masora it's a Japanese rose 
Isn't that so lovely? And then over here, I had a few Evelyn blooms already this week, but they're both gone right now, but so many more that are getting ready to come. And then a rose called Jeff Hamilton, which is this light pink. All of my roses are David Austin roses, except for Masora. I have some catmint. This is a, a variety called Walker's Low. Has these really beautiful purple blooms on it. And of course you can see the alliums that are blooming. I didn't plant those last year. They came back from previous years. So that's exciting to see. And then in here, We have the beautiful Teasing Georgia David Austin rose. This smells wonderful, but it is a bear to tie up because it's quite thorny. But I did get it tied in. I'm really happy with how that's looking so it will stay on the fence. And then down over here, we have some sweet rocket that is just beginning to bloom. It's so fragrant. I have to be careful with this though because it self seeds everywhere so there's so many down there and throughout the garden that I have to dig up because otherwise it will go everywhere. Um, there's some echinacea aka coneflower hanging out in here. I have this lupin. This was a gift from my mom for Christmas a couple years ago. This variety is called Masterpiece. I love that warm purple. I just love like a purple scheme in the garden. Speaking of purple, down over here I have some geranium. This is called, it's a perennial geranium called Razan. There's another one there. It should get nice and bushy. I planted this last year uh, and it was a very small plant. It hasn't gotten super big yet. Then in my pot, I have a dahlia right here. I forget which one it is. I really did not go hard on dahlias this year because I really wanted to grow florets, seeds, the from her breeding program. So I really only have this one and then what that's the only one I purchased, but for whatever reason, I cannot remember which one it was. And then whatever ends up coming back from last year. And it looks like that one is coming back from last year. That's one called Yvonne. It's a water lily variety. And then I planted some nasturtium in the pot so that that will hopefully spill out and over. I have some sweet peas on my trellis. It's a little bit late for them here, but they're growing. So I don't know. I'm just going to leave them be. That's the hellebore that I planted not too long ago that I got from Trader Joe's. And this, this is exciting to me. Super exciting. Um, as you guys know, this garden is very much an experiment because of all the shade that it gets. And it looks like Foxglove, aka Digitales, does incredibly well back here. There's no stakes in this. It's very upright in a very shady spot. So you better believe I'm going to be planting more of that along here and here because it just does so well. Here's another rose called Wild Eve, this gorgeous blush pink color. It's almost like moonstone. It glows. It's a stunning rose. I love Wild Eve. Lots of buds to come on that and then she is mingling with a hollyhock <laughs> she is mixing with a hollyhock last year the one that bloomed here was a dark purple color but i've planted dark purple a uh, variety and like a double like apricot pink variety so it could be either of those because i didn't replant it it just is coming up from when i planted seeds and then i have my clematis over here these are the flower buds that are starting to form on it. And so the idea is that eventually the clematis, I wanna train it in kind of both ways really, but especially this way, so that it meets with the uh, climbing rose and they kind of intermingle together because clematis and roses work really well together. Closer look at this beautiful foxglove have to be careful though I'd always have to wash wash your hands after touching any foxglove because the entire plant from the foliage to the flowers to the seeds everything is poisonous so always wash your hands after touching a foxglove but it's so beautiful definitely want to put more over here and then my honesty aka money plant has grown for the first time. I'm so excited to see this in the winter. So this is what the pods look like during the summer. It also gets like purple flowers. Yeah, so here's some of the flowers 
that it has on it. Really pretty. It does need support, so I've like kind of strung it up in this sticks that were here from a handmade trellis. But the cool thing about money plants, aka honesty, is that in the winter time, the pods, like these leaves, dry out and they become like this really gorgeous silvery see-through leaf. And so it's just as architectural and beautiful in the winter time as it looks pretty in the summertime with the flowers. And then these little things in here are seeds that you can collect to uh, sow next year's flowers. Some more uh, sweet rocket. And then I have two pots on either side of the greenhouse and they both originally had a hydrangea in it. This is called Blue Jangles. The soil does have to be somewhat acidic though in order for it to bloom blue. And this is the first, no, it's just actually, it's bloomed last year and last year it was pink. So who knows what it will be this year, probably pink again because the soil in it isn't acidic enough for it to be blue. So I need to go get something to acidify uh, the soil a little bit more so that it can be in that blue purple color scheme that I like. And then I'm not sure, I like the idea of having symmetry on both sides, but I'm not sure if I want to plant another one again, just cause that one died a couple years ago, or if I want to try to plant something different. I did have tulips in there, so it's empty right now, but it had blooms in it before. And then lastly, the greenhouse. It's a very meager greenhouse this year. This is all I have sowed. I have lots of cosmos and then lots of plants from Florette. Uh, all of the zinnias from her breeding program and some seed dahlias. I have a couple uh, snapdragons right here and some extra nasturtium, although truth be told I don't. As you can see, nasturtium really should just be direct sowed uh, because it grows so quickly. But uh, yeah, I didn't really sow a lot this year. Gardening space is very tight and I tend to like perennials more than anything else. I just really like them and they're easier to take care of and I love the look of a perennial garden. It's very cottage-like to me and any of the annuals that I have in the garden, like Sweet Rocket for example, they will tend to self-sow anyway so I don't really need to sow a lot of stuff anymore. Eventually someday when I have a bigger garden I would love, love to have uh, more annuals that I sow but for now there's really just not enough space to do it so especially as I continue to collect more roses for no reason but yeah so that's kind of like the garden in late spring these foxgloves I think are the best thing out here right now they're so beautiful and of course the roses that are on teasing Georgia and wild Eve are really beautiful right now so I can't wait for things to start really going into bloom especially like they are in the other garden the other garden has popped off so I'll try to show you that sometime in this vlog um, before it's over if not I'll show you again in the future or on Instagram again Jacqueline is gardening I share a lot of gardening content over there but that's kind of the update for now I'm gonna go inside and kind of rinse off, take a quick shower. I think Andrew and I are gonna go to, um, I guess I don't really need this anymore. Um, I think Andrew and I are gonna go to his game club tonight. I might bring my fabric to continue cutting out my quilt to have something to do. I'm not really a gamer, if I'm being honest. Um, I'll play a board game here and there, but not like they do. They wanna play board games that are like six, hours long, nine hours long, days long, sometimes like multiple like sessions and that's just, that's not the life for me. So I'm a casual hour, hour long gamer. So I'm gonna bring a project to do with me when I go over there just so I can hang out and have fun with them.
ready for me also, please. Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday. Turn up the brightness so you can see me. It is Saturday, and Andrew and I have just grabbed some coffees and some blueberry danishes that he has uh, raved to me about, so I can't wait to try it. It's like a blueberry cream cheese danish from one of our local coffee shops. Uh, we're headed to Home Improvement Store right now, either Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever is open, to grab some supplies for one of Andrew's job sites. And then also I'm tagging along because I want to grab some gardening supplies. I need like some, some small stakes and stuff like that for some of the stuff in, uh, in the Black House Garden. So I'm gonna stop to get some of that today. I did finish cutting out all of the squares for the quilt yesterday. I'm so excited about it. I went uh, with Andrew tagged along when he played, uh, what was the game called? It's called The Dark Valley. The Dark Valley, and it's about the Eastern Front in World War One or two? Two. Two. So it's a game that he's been playing with his friends um, that he's been having a lot of fun it's with. so crunchy. Yeah, he really likes it. He says he's been thinking about it nonstop, which is always a good sign that something is lighting up your brain, I think. Um, but yeah, so while he was doing that, I brought along my tiny tile quilt and I cut out all of the rest of the squares. So I got all that done while I was hanging out with them. So that's very exciting. So I can start the quilt. So I'm tempted. That's why I'm like, do I want to go on the date today? Because I really want to start the quilt. But we'll see. The weather's so perfect and so beautiful today as well. It's so nice out. But anyway, all right, we'll take you along with us for the day. I told Andrew just to abandon me in the garden center because I'll be here for ages. So I think he's shopping for his uh, work stuff. He's even gonna go drop it off at his job site. So while he shops for his work supplies, I'm going to be browsing to my heart's content for the garden. Okay, I am back home. Andrew unfortunately has to deal with a not so great work emergency, but such is life, I guess. I got, let me show you lots of herbs and uh, to plant in our window boxes outside of our kitchen window. Even though lavender never grows for me, I decided to try it anyway. So I bought a lavender, everything's wet because I just watered it. I got this, is it called an alocasia? I don't know, I need to look it up, but it says it can grow in part shade and I'm always looking for plants to put back there and on this side, so I'm gonna try it out over there. And this is also a part shade grass that gets tall, but not super wide apparently. It's called a Blue Arrows Rush. And then I bought more of that Velcro stuff that I was telling you guys about yesterday. And I also got two trellises to help with two of my roses. This tomato cage one, I'm gonna cut into two. So I'm gonna cut it like, just right there to support um, a rose bush that's in that back corner over there. So I got a few trellises. I stopped by the other garden briefly and oh my gosh, it has exploded into bloom. I have to show, I cannot wait to show you. It's like full sun out there right now, so it's just not the best time of day, but rest assured this evening we will be going over there and I will have to show you that garden because it's insane. So many blooming roses. All right, while Andrew deals with his work situation, I've got all of my squares. I've got all of my two inch squares and I think I'm just gonna start sewing up these uh, tiny tiles pieces. So the way that it works is that I have the one square and then I take four squares of the two inch squares randomly. Also one to each corner on the diagonal so that when it flips up, it'll look like four triangles in each corner. And then when I put them together, all the blocks, then this will start to make the tiles in the center, if that makes sense. To speed things up a little bit, I'm gonna chain piece these. So I'm going to pin the two inch squares to one corner on a bunch of them, just so I can go ahead and like chain piece them. That'll be a lot faster than stopping and starting, cutting the threads, etc. So I'm gonna pin a triangle to each um, a big stack of these and chain piece a bunch of them just to speed up the process a little bit. Frida is hiding in my bag of two inch squares. Oh, hey, yo. <laughs> look at this, look at this mess. 
<laughs> As usual, lots of help from the kitties. They've very graciously left me this tiny space to work in. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello everyone, it is sometime later. Andrew and I were out at Prospect Park for most of the afternoon. We had a little bit of lunch out there, we took a nap, did some reading, some video games. It was just a lovely leisurely afternoon and we have just got back and decided to go ahead and plant all of the new herbs that we got today. So we have the basil and the dill, we've got cilantro right there. We have another little spot. We think we're gonna grab another cilantro. We have chives, those have come back from previous years. We have rosemary, again, come back from the previous year. We've refreshed, replaced our oregano. I know oregano will spread, but usually you're pretty good about staying on top of it and using it often enough. Same for the thyme. Uh, that thyme has come back. This is a fresh one, another oregano. There's a sage plant over there. Another thyme and some more sage. Also, bad news. I started sewing tiny tiles, I was very excited, and I've determined, like many people tried to warn me, that the ones that are not quilting cottons are just not going to work. They're too annoying and fiddly to like line up properly, it like won't, I can't like massage them together into place to keep them even, and so almost all of the ones I've sewn from one of them in particular have been like off square and I don't care about it being like perfect perfect but it's not even like to my eyeball perfect like I, I know I can get it so I think I'm gonna have to toss those out and order fabrics again. I've tried doing this already and I just have not found something close to that chartreuse green which is so frustrating because that's one of my favorite ones in the bunch. But I've been looking on Etsy at some quilting shops that are on Etsy and found one that I think is really good, a pretty close match. So yeah, I'm gonna have to wait to sew it still. And I'm so sad because I've been so excited to work on something. See, I told you guys this morning, I just haven't really been in the, or I guess it was yesterday. I haven't been in the mood to do a lot of like garment sewing at the moment, but quilting just is really appealing to me right now. So yeah, I'm like really excited to get sewing, but can't just yet. So yeah, I'm gonna have to order those fabrics, cut two more of the two inch squares out, and then I'll be ready. All right, it's the end of the day, sun is setting. We're at the Arbor Garden. I have to show you around, it's so magical. This one is my favorite of all my roses. It's so hard to pick, but it is, I don't know, just something about it. The scent, the color, the form, beautiful. It's called Crown Princess Margareta. Again, another David Austin. All of the roses in this garden are David Austin. This one's called Woolerton Old Hall kind of like an apricotty white. Here we have Olivia, which is the first one to bloom every year. It's kind of already going over for the first flush, as you can see. And this one, Eustacia Vi. It's more of like an apricotty pink color. This is an iris called Dusky Challenger. It's like this royal purple color. Even the signals are purple. It's beautiful. Desdemona. And then this one, 
right here is called Crocus. It's such an interesting rose. It looks like creamy white right now, but it really changes color a lot depending on the time of year, the heat, uh, how much rain we've had. It's like creamy with this peachy pink interior right now, but I've seen it in so many different forms depending on bloom stage. Yeah, it's also one of my favorites. I love Crocus Rose. And then this one I think is probably the showstopper right now. It's like in its peak bloom. This is one called Sweet Juliet. And it's another, I just love these apricot pink color roses. And it's just going crazy right now. So many blooms, it looks absolutely magical. back from brunch I cut some flowers from my garden these are all roses from the black house garden aren't they so stunning in here is Bathsheba lady gardener teasing Georgia and I think one Masora rose which is this like peachy one right there just makes me happy 